finished. And the title of the message is, Christmas isn't finished. Christmas isn't finished. It's not finished. Because we're believers. The celebration of Christmas is a daily occurrence for us. It's an everyday thing. Christmas, celebrating Jesus, the birth of Jesus, is an everyday thing for us. It's every day. It should affect every bit of your day. If you're ever thinking wonky, even, even if you just consider Jesus for one minute, the fact that He was born, that will change your stinking thinking. Amen? That will change it. And you know, talking about Christmas, I'm not talking turkey. Surely you've eaten it all by now, right? I'm not, I'm not talking, I remember, you know, back in the 70s when everything was great and music was good, <laughs> praise God, um, turkey lasted like for a whole week after Christmas. It was because it was always so big and you're having tur- turkey curries, tur- anything turkey, you had turkey and everything was turkey. But what I'm doing is I'm following on from all, all, all the, the, the messages that I gave last year about the the reality of God's love, his unfeigned love. Um, And this is our year of immense images, and until you know how much you're loved, you can't possibly start to imagine how much you can love. And that's immense in itself. Just like Victor was saying, the, the tithe is holy, God is holy. God is holy. It's his holiness that should be in everything that you do. His holiness. You were saved because of his holiness and his holiness is immense it's enormous it's massive and before Christmas I was talking about that authentic love and real love has a a corresponding fruit who knows people who are Christians and you couldn't tell by looking at their lives you know, you can go to a lot of the, 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 the stand outside a lot of the churches on a, on a Sunday when they come out and they all look like they've been sucking on lemons. <laughs> they don't look happy at all. There's no joy. Where's the joy? I mean, after a certain, it, it, there's so much joy just in this room right now. It's tangible. I love it. I like to spread it on my toast in the morning. Would you like jam? No, I'll go for joy. <laughs> Thank you. I'll have the joy. And um, the corresponding fruit from us receiving and believing that love I think shows when we walk in freedom and when we walk in love and when we walk in joy I believe that's the corresponding fruit of the reality of our salvation I just do and my true hope is that we're all more enlightened to the never changing truth about what the birth of Jesus means for each and every one of us every second of every day That was my hope last year because the unfeigned love of God was Jesus. The authentic love of God was Jesus. I'm preaching today, by the way, I've just decided. It's the authentic love of Jesus. For God so loved the world that he sent his one and only begotten son. It came from love, it stemmed from love and there was a physical manifestation of the love of God and there should be a physical manifestation of the love of God in each and every one of us in every single day of our lives. We can walk in love. We can walk free because we're loved. We can walk free because we know how to love. Are you seeing what I'm saying? Amen. (laughs) Praise God. And I want us to keep moving forward towards the glorious day that we know is going to come. Every day is awesome. And we, it, us who believe know that there's a much more awesomer and glorious day to come. You know, the day that we leave this mortal life and then we become fully restored back to our Father in heaven with zero fear of what's to come. There is no fear on any condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, right? We're not going to get to heaven and be judged and have the the video playing of all the bad things that you've done. In a split second, everything that you've done that is of no use to you in the kingdom just gets burnt up, destroyed. Wood, hay, stubble. It's gone. It's not even considered. I used to have that thought. You know, I don't know where it came from, that there would be like a a, a VHS video, because God hasn't got got up with downloads yet. There'd be a VHS, yeah, 70s, big Betamax with uh, big, big, big buttons. And they'd be saying, well, you know, you see, and you did that, and you did that. No! The only thing that's, that's ever going to be considered is what did you do with Jesus? 
Well, I received him as my Lord and Saviour. That's the only consideration in heaven. What have you done with Jesus? He's my Lord and he's my Saviour. Cha-ching! That's it. All the other stuff is just destroyed. And we, we, we can't fear what's to come. So therefore, we need to not walk in fear here. We can't walk in fear here because if we've got no fear of what's to come, that means we definitely don't have to fear tomorrow. What's tomorrow going to do to stop you going there? Nothing. Nothing can change that truth because nothing can change the unfeigned love of God. And His promises are true and they're yes and they're amen, right? So fear is dealt with like that. Just like that. If you consider Him and consider that, Fear is finished and dealt with. You have got nothing to fear. Nothing to fear. That's good news, right? So I'll see you next week. But do you know what I'm saying? If people could just get a, a handle on that, their lives would be changed in every aspect of their life. Because most things are, are created by fear. Fear of disappointment. Fear of judge, judgment. Fear of lack. Fear of loss. It's all, everything in your life is based around fear if it's a negative. Fear is a big subject. I mean, I might have to preach on it, but I won't because you can read your Bible. Fear not. Do not be afraid and do not be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Wherever you go. Wherever you go. <laughs> Jesus went into the pit of hell and set the captives free. Wherever you go, there's no limit for where he can go. And I'm telling you, this year is going to be above and beyond every year before. Because we're drawing closer to that glorious day. And the church is going to get brighter and brighter as we draw closer to that glorious day. The world is going to get darker, but the church is going to shine brighter. And we're the church. So you're just going to get shinier and shinier every day. The closer we get to that day, people are going to have to wear sunglasses to talk to you. <laughs> Amen. I moisturise my big shiny face. Praise God. Praise God. But I believe that... Um, this church, his church, his church. Man, there's a lot of people who put their own identity into what church should be like. This is his church. This is his church. Praise God, we're in his church. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. But I believe that us being in unity and dreaming big is, is, is the first thing that's going to make a difference to each and every one of us this year. If we could all be in unity on just that one truth that I said, that should set you free to be able to start dreaming big. Because you won't be constrained by the fears and the thoughts that run through your own minds. You won't be constrained by what other people say is going on in the world. You know, I think there's some, aren't they banging on about some financial problem going on in the world today? People are all scared about it, bit of old nonsense. We've had the best year we've ever had. My wages haven't gone up, but we've had the best year we've ever had. Praise God. Praise God. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. How did that happen? I don't know. It's supernatural. It's supernatural. Praise God. We are not, we are not of the world. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. Amen. And today I want us to start as we must go on. And it's an important start for the year. Read your Bibles, <laughs> praise God. Get the Tree of Life app. It's, uh, where is it? Tree.church forward slash app. It's not difficult. It's free. And there's a Bible reading plan on there. And you'll read the whole Bible in a year. And if you think that you can, you can <clears throat> bootleg being a Christian off all the Christians that are reading their Bible and that you're going to get through your day-to-day -day life with the same victories that they're saying. We see victories in this church. These, these are victorious people. These are victorious people. These are victorious people. These are victorious people because they're reading the Word. There isn't, there's no trick to it. It's not, oh, well, they, they have a special anointing on their life to have the joy. No! They've just read the Word. 
believed the word, applied the word to their lives. And it, the, the end. <laughs> the end. I'm going to write my million bestseller. Guaranteed 100% victorious life. They'd all go out and buy it. Ooh. Page one, read the Bible. Page two, the end. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. And I'm going to prove it to you. Psalm 103. Now that will just tell you that Psalm 103 means that there's 102 Psalms prior to t Psalm 103 and they're all good as well. It's an abundance of wisdom in the Bible. But I'm going to focus on this one today. Psalm 103 verse, verses 1 and 2. Bless the Lord, all my soul, and all that is within me, bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits. Can you read that? Can you, can you please all do me a favour and say, forget not all His benefits? Now, um, look at the person next to you and tell them. <laughs> and this, uh, you know, it's, this isn't kindergarten. I used to call it kindergarten until I saw the movie Kindergarten Cop. It's kindergarten. I don't even know what, what that's about. But this isn't, this isn't child's play. It's important. Forget not all his benefits. And in my experience being a, a pastor with Jacqueline now for, for almost... In fact, I'm going to say with my beautiful wife, Jacqueline. Why not? Get some brownie points when you're in the pulpit. <laughs> Just to say that brownie points don't have a, a uh, uh, they, they only last the day that, you, that they're, they're, they're won. I can't dine out on that one tomorrow. Praise God. <laughs> In fact, I've just blown that one, so um, I humbly accept my punishment <laughs> in Jesus' name. Um, but I would say that one of the biggest reasons, and listen, I'm speaking to you as someone who, I, 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 I get messages most days, I speak with people a lot, I hear a lot of people's day-to-day -day struggles and, and, and just stuff. And, and I would say that one of the biggest reasons for the situations that people find themselves in is covered in that. They forgot all the benefits. They forgot all the benefits. And I'm not talking government benefits. Amen. <laughs> Which in the long term, they don't help anyone. They, they trap people in this subservient slave to the system relationship. And what that does, it removes the possibility for you to have any faith in God. In the provision of God. I shall supply all your needs. He provides for us. And th this, this welfare state is in a state. Amen? It's, it shouldn't even have well before fair. <laughs> Praise God. And I listen, I know that that will challenge people of little faith. I, I'm not saying it's bad to help perfectly able-bodied people in the short term. In the short term, you know, of course we should help people in need. We should. But there has to be a line. You know, and whenever I speak to you, it's always from personal experience. I never get in the pulpit and make stuff up. And I never use scripture that I've only just realised works. I live it. I live it. And then I can give you experiences based on living it and living through it and seeing the miraculous on the other side. You know, it's always personal experience. It's never just opinion. And according to the current... Uh, immigration requirements I was once a refugee I was once a refugee in a foreign land I, uh, what I thought I was doing I was fleeing from the tyranny of a dictatorship which I called the British government I couldn't stand living here anymore it was, uh, it was the 90s and it was, it was time to get out it was 1994 that I left Britain because of the constraints of the British government not allowing me to do all the nefarious activities that I wanted to do without getting arrested. But <coughs> so I, f I left for, for, for sunnier climes. I, I left and I moved to Southeast Asia and I was, 
I was there, I thought, for just a short time on my way to New Zealand where I was going to buy a house because I'd toured New Zealand and New Zealand's awesome, by the way. If anyone's watching from New Zealand and they're here, go home. It's much better. <laughs> <coughs> it's much better. Pray God. Don't come here working in bars. Go home. You got it good. But, but I landed in a foreign country through the right channels or channel. Just saying. <laughs> I filled all the forms. I applied for the visa. I paid all the money. I had all my injections. I wasn't scared about the injections. I didn't know what was in them, but I had them because I had to have them to go there. Another subject. But we got nothing to fear. Amen. And uh, I respected the nation that I was going to by having enough money left over from my travel costs to actually pay to live there. This isn't a political um, message, but hopefully you're going to see the message within the message here. And the money, because I thought I was only going there for three months, I actually ended up staying for four and a half years. Um, and it's not because I lost my passport, amen. <laughs> uh, I, I just ended up staying there through one thing or another, and I, I knew the money was going to run out, so I got a job, got a job in a bar, working in a bar, and I worked hard, and I did everything that was required of me of my job, and I... I worked harder, I did extra. So then I started DJing, and then I started seeing in the bar they could, they could do a bit of building work. So I did some building work, did some carpentry, changed the place, and I'm the manager, and I'm cleaning, and I'm, I'm, I'm building it, and I'm the DJ, and I'm working hard, and then uh, I, I did well, and then someone else offered me a job in a nightclub, a better job, more money. I worked hard. I did everything that I needed to do. I did everything that I knew how to do. I made money. I opened a business. I worked hard. I did everything I needed to do and then I did some more. And I worked hard. I worked hard at being who I was. I used every skill, every talent, every ability that I had. Every benefit of being me, I applied it into doing what I wanted to do. And I was, I was successful. And with the businesses, I, 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 I did everything uh, legally and I did everything properly. Most of the time, <coughs> it was a foreign country. You could get away with murder. Just <laughs> This is before I was a Christian. But I carried on working hard using all the benefits of being me. I didn't arrive and get given a hotel to live in with three meals a day and then complain about it. I wasn't offered anything. And I didn't ask for anything from anyone. People helped me though. Because they saw I worked hard. They saw I had an, an, a work ethic. They saw I was the uh, person they could rely on, so they helped me. And I, and, I, and I built something. I built something there. But the point is, I was the one who felt that I had to leave my own country. That was my decision. I did it. So I took responsibility for my own actions. I didn't ask anyone to help me. I got on with it myself. I used all my abilities, all my talents, all my knowledge at the time, the benefits of being who I was, to live the life that I had basically chosen in a different nation. Now, it's a very similar principle for us to live our Christian lives from a biblical perspective. We've chosen to leave our old way of living. We've made that choice. We've done it. And from a, a biblical perspective, we are now citizens of a new nation. We are citizens of God's nation. We've chosen to leave the old life and live a new life. And you're going to have to work hard. People say, oh no, but that's a works mentality. No, you're going to have to work hard and not going back to living like the old one. To live in the old life. That's what, because we easily slip back into the old way of thinking. And we can only live the new life by not forgetting what we know about who we are and all the benefits we have being us as believers. As believers, that's using all the talents, all the knowledge, all the, all the benefits of being you as a believer. It's not on you, it's on what you know. It's you applying what you know. And there are a lot of benefits we've got being believers. And what are those benefits, Richard? I hear you all cry. What are 
Well, for you four, look at the next verse. Who forgives all your iniquity? Who forgives all your iniquity? That's good news, right? That, that means that some of our mistakes have been forgiven. Oh! Oh! You mean all of our mistakes have been forgiven? So why do I know so many Christians who are living under the condemnation of all the mistakes? Those mistakes must be the ones that aren't covered there. <sighs> it can't be all. Not according to how often we think that we've got it wrong and we're the worst Christian in the kingdom. But it is all, isn't it? It is all. Capital letters, all. To the exclusion of none. Is what it says in the Greek. To the exclusion of none. Even that one that you think's really, really bad, forget it. It's dealt with. You've been forgiven. You've been forgiven. You've been forgiven. You've been forgiven. Everything you've ever done that you could possibly imagine was wrong on any level, forgiven. <laughs> Praise God. You see, that word iniquity there is quite a heavy one. It means anything you've done which is grossly unfair, perverse, or wicked. And I know that I can put everything I've ever done into those categories. All of it. Everything I've done, the worst, is covered. Hallelujah. That's why I've got this big smile on my face. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. God's forgiveness literally covers a multitude of sins. Amen. So, with that being said, I'm going to ask you to all do something that's really important. Don't forget it! Don't forget it! You see, we have to work at not forgetting. This is what I'm talking about, at working hard at being who you are by not forgetting all his benefits. That's the thing we need to work at this year. We need to work at not forgetting all his benefits, not forgetting that all your sins are, forgi are forgiven. Say this, Jesus has forgiven me. <laughs> no. Jesus has forgiven me. Yeah. Awesome. Praise God. Praise God. And is it that, that way he's forgiven you is, is exactly the same way he forgave Mary Magdalene, the prostitute, for all her mistakes, for every sin. I'm going to read it to you so you get a grasp on what this forgiveness is all about. And bearing in mind, this was before Jesus went to the cross. Jesus has the power to forgive your sins. Uh, Luke 7, verses 47 down to 50. Therefore I tell you, I'm reading this the Amplified Classic, her sins, many as they are, are forgiven because she has loved much. But he who is forgiven little loves little. Now what does that mean? If there was only some forgiveness, there would be room for you to doubt. And, and if there was only some forgiveness, you'd have to work out what bits. You would. So he who has been forgiven much, amen, he who has been loved much, can love much. No confusion. Is there no confusion in this room? Yes, there is no confusion. Someone was listening. Thank you, darling. <laughs> and he said to her, your sins are forgiven. Then those who were at table with him began to say amongst themselves, who is this who even forgives sins? But Jesus said to the woman, this is interesting, your faith has saved you. Go enter into peace in freedom from all the distresses that are experienced as the result of sin. That's just awesome. By not forgetting all his benefits, which include his forgiving you, you're actually activating your faith in him. It's when you remember that you're forgiven that you activate the faith in you being forgiven. That's how it works. And by doing so, what you do is you open the door to your salvation. 
Because salvation is more than just a, a, a statement in the Bible. There is a corresponding, there is fruit to your salvation. Going back to you being able to walk in freedom, walk in victory. And when you don't forget that, it opens the door. Your faith in that statement, in that you are forgiven, opens the door to everything in your life. We need to walk in our salvation. Not just know that we are saved, we walk in it. The same way when a, a, a mem- a, a, like someone in royalty is crowned with the crown, they then have to walk like royalty, obviously with a bit of that because they've got a big heavy crown on. But you, you walk in it, everything about you changes. You have, the, you have the authority of royalty, which is what we have. Does that make sense? So according to that, According to that, if you don't remember that you're forgiven, you can't walk free. You can't walk free. You can't go in peace like Jesus just said. Jesus said it. And you'll still experience all the distress caused by sin. So, any distress that you have in your life is simply the result of you making the wrong choice to not remember what Jesus has done. Doesn't that just simplify everything? I think so. I mean, I've probably put in a lot of words to overcomplicate something very simple. Don't forget it. Don't forget who you are because of it. And if you're distressed or anything looks wonky, that's your fault for being distressed because you've forgotten all his benefits. You haven't remembered what he's done. You know, I looked it up in the dictionary, the Oxford Dictionary, just to add. Oh, it's the Cambridge one that's gone all wonky. The Oxford Dictionary definition of distress is to experience extreme anxiety, sorrow or pain. So if any of you find yourself experiencing anything there, extreme anxiety, sorrow or pain, it's time to remind yourself of what you've heard in the Word. According to Jesus himself, we're set free from all of those things. Anxiety, distress, pain. You are set free from it. Sorrow. You're set free from it. You're set free from it. He bore all of our sins. He took all our iniquities. He was the man of sorrows. He took all your sorrow. I'm not saying that sad things aren't going to happen, but we should be walking around with, with a smile in all things because we know God. Even at times of loss when we lose loved ones. Praise God, we know when they're born again, we know exactly where they're going. Praise God. It's a time of celebration. You can celebrate the life and celebrate the life that's to come. If the person was unknowingly born again, you can celebrate that God is a good, good God. And His his mercy is always running. His love is always running after someone. And we don't know what happens in that that split second to us, that moment at the end of life. Because I believe that, that God is still waiting. That Jesus is still knocking at the door and he's right there. None of us know. God's God's will is that none should perish and all should come to repentance, right? When we don't forget who our Father in heaven is, even the worst situation on earth, we can find the joy in it. We can find the joy in it. And all our sins, many as they are, are forgiven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. (laughs) <laughs> Welcome to 2023. Amen. It's our year of walking in absolute freedom. Everyone in here is going to walk in absolute freedom. You get, you get into your Bible reading. The, the, it's, I guarantee you I walk in freedom for no other reason than I read the Word and I know who I am. I've got no doubt who I am because I've got no doubt who He, who, who he is. And when you walk in freedom, that's when you're free to dream big. You're free to see immense images. Amen? And that's a good deal. That's a good deal. We believe in Jesus. We receive all his benefits. And then all we need to do is not forget it. That's all we need to do is not forget it. Especially when we're in life's trials and tribulations. And you see, that's where a lot of the problem lies as well, is, 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 is a lot of us manage to bash ourselves up with condemnation. Condemnation is a big one, forgetting that we're forgiven and listening to the lies of the devil. Stop it. Stop listening to him. He's a loser. You're a winner. 
If a voice says you're a loser, that's a liar. You're a winner. According to not forgetting all his benefits. You know, your portion in life is life. Forever. (laughs) Praise God. And I can categorically tell you with 100% confidence that Jesus has forgiven you and that's not all. Because that said benefits. There's an S there. There's lots of them. And it's right there, you see it. Who heals all your diseases? Who heals all your diseases? Who heals all your diseases? All your diseases. All of them. All of them. All of them. (laughs) All. All. This year is us getting in practice for next year. This year we're already victorious. There's a lot of people focusing on what they're going to do this year. Well, I'm looking at this year as training for next year. I'm looking ahead. I'm looking beyond this year already because I know that this year is already won. I walked into it and I'm walking out of it in victory. Better than I did when I walked into it because that has been our story. Every year we get stronger, we get better, we get wiser, we get healthier, we get better looking. Ooh, that split the room, didn't it? (laughs) Praise God. What shall I say? What shall I say? (laughs) But in the same way that we don't forget the price that we should be paying for for the forgiveness of all our sins, even though we can't see it, you can't see the forgiveness of your sins, right? You can't, you can't see it. It's not something you can see. It's something that you know. It's, it's a knowledge. It's a knowledge that changes the way you walk through your day-to-day life. It's that knowledge that sets you free. Exactly the same way, you don't have to pay anything more for your healing. It's the knowledge of it which allows you to walk in it. It's not forgetting that it's a benefit that you have that allows you to walk in it. It's a be- you just already have it. The same payment in full has been made for every sickness. In fact, any, any uh, what's, what's it they call? Diagnosis. Any diagnosis that comes along that's contrary to you being healed of all your dis- diseases is a lie. Because it thinks that it can raise itself up above the gospel of Jesus Christ. It thinks it's above. It's not. We're above and not below. Nothing usurps, write that down, that's a good word. Nothing usurps the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's the truth of it. The truth is the truth and nothing anybody else says can change that truth. They might give you a fact, they might give you a condition, but it doesn't make any difference. It doesn't make it, I'm in perfect health in Jesus' name. And I'm going to stay and walk in perfect health in Jesus' name. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. You can say that with 100% confidence. Because it was through the, the whipping and the beating of Jesus' body, by his stripes you were healed. That's when it got dealt with then. And you received it when you got born again. Amen? You're healed. If you've got anything wrong with you right now, put your hand on it and say, you're a lie, I'm healed in Jesus' name. You have the power and authority to declare healing over your body. The same spirit that was in here when we were worshipping, where we were celebrating our freedom and our victory and our salvation, is the same spirit in here that heals all your diseases. All your diseases. Anything that comes along is a temporary issue. It just depends how long temporary is in your life. Because this is the shortest time you're ever going to spend doing anything. This life. Eternity is a lot longer than a few years here. This is just a holiday. Praise God. I was going to say like Club 1830, but it's more like Club 1 to 120. Praise God. Uh, No one else knows what... I don't know why I'm bothering. (laughs) There used to be holidays called Club 1830 and you could only go if you were between 18 and 30 and it was a it was a it was a hot mess <laughs> just saying 
<laughs> you didn't miss much. Anyway, while I'm here, I'm going to read the next two verses purely because they're awesome and uh, they've got some more benefits in them. And I did read from them, um, I think, in November or December, sometime like that. Um, and it's, it's some more benefits. It's Psalm 103 again, obviously, and verses 4 and 5. These are benefits. Who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Praise the Lord. Nothing wrong with all of that. Amen. There's nothing wrong with being reminded that we're saved from the pit of hell. Hallelujah. We're saved from the pit of hell. Did, uh, did Benga fall asleep against the light switch? <laughs> Wake the man up. Goodness gracious. <laughs> but we are, we, according to that scripture, we are crowned right now, right? It says, you are crowned. You are crowned for everything in heaven and every demon on earth to see with God's steadfast, immovable love and His everlasting mercy. There's a crown on your head right now in the spirit world and everything can see it. You know, I preached on it just for Christmas, didn't I? That's good news. How you look right now in the spirit is how we must pursue our day-to-day -day life walking on this earth, knowing who we are in the Spirit. And then, obviously there's that bit of Scripture that the ladies love to use as the supernatural moisturiser. Our youth is restored like the eagles. Mmm, our youth is restored like the eagles. Mmm, all the ladies, all the ladies love that one, don't they? But, uh, you know, and I'm not countering that, and according to your faith, so it shall be. <laughs> But I believe it's the restoration of our youthful ability to dream fantastic dreams. Like a child, to, to have immense images, to think without the constraints of the realities of the world, to be able to think beyond what we can see, but think about just the things we want to see. Which lines up with Scripture, to fly high in your thoughts, amen? And that gets renewed. I believe that's what gets renewed. Now... You can take that one with you. Now here's a script, because uh, I think maybe as I'm getting older, I'm realising that it doesn't work as, as actual physical moisturiser. So I was trying to find out what it actually meant, and I prayed about it, and that's, that's what came up. If there's scripture that you're looking at, and you're thinking, I'm not seeing what I'm thinking I'm, I should be seeing, pray about it. Ask the Holy Spirit to guide you, to lead you. As we said before, those who are born of the Spirit are led by the Spirit. Be led by the Spirit. Don't try and work things out in your carnal mind. Your carnal mind can't work it out. You can't work it out. Is you know the the things of God are so far beyond what we can think in our minds. So have faith in the Holy Spirit. He's there to guide you. He's there to lead you. He's there to teach you. Um, rely on Him. And if you're not baptizing the Holy Spirit right now, I'm praying in tongues. You need to come and see me afterwards and take that gift. I'm just offering it as a gift. I'm not saying you've got to have it. You know, you can, you, I, I was healed when I was, wasn't baptised in the Holy Spirit. I saw miracles when I wasn't baptised in the Holy Spirit. But since getting baptised in the Holy Spirit and praying in tongues, man, Christianity, woo! I've gone from the slow lane to the fast lane. You still go to the same location, just you get there quicker and it's more exciting. Praise God. Anyway, so this is a scripture I preached, um, or I used when I was preaching on the subject of hope in November. And it's just going to tie in with this. So it's Ephesians 2, 11 and 12. Therefore remember that at one time you Gentiles in the flesh called the uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision, which is made in the flesh by hands. Remember that you were at one time separated from Christ, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. Now this is reminding us that without Christ, we had and we have no hope in the world. Right? I preached on it, you can listen to it um, on the app. But do you see the theme there? Did you see the start of each bit? It says, we must remember. As in, forget not. Forget not that you were once separated but you're not anymore. You're not separated from Him anymore. You've been grafted into the vine of life, the root of Jesus Himself. His blood is your redemption and it's in each and every one of us to equal measure right now. 
Amen? Right now. And that is so important for us to remember. Because if you remember what Hosea says, I think it's Hosea 4.6, my people perish through a lack of knowledge. I, 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 I'm taking it a bit further and saying there's a lack of knowledge and a lot of Christians forget what they know. They forget what they know. They forget what, the importance of what they know. The simple truth that you're saved is a life changer. Literally. It's a life changer. You have gone from death to life. Don't forget it and don't forget all the benefits that come with it. <laughs> so tempted to talk about Cracker Jack again. But that's just... See? And they've all forgotten. And it's true. Because there are people who think the things that they've done or that they're doing are so bad that they can't be accepted by God. Unbelievers and believers. Too many believers think that the Lord has turned His face away from me. He can't look at me. That's stupid. That's a lie of the devil. God is never going to turn His face away from you. God loves you. That's not love, is it? Love is not going, I can't speak to you. That's not love. I can't speak about this. That's not love. That's not love. God's always there. Because he's forgiven all your sins. <laughs> Many as they are. Amen. And that is for every believer and every unbeliever. The whole world is forgiven. The whole world is forgiven. But how will they know if they're not told? That's what we're doing here. Right here, right now, today, I'm telling you, and you can go and tell other people. You give from what you receive. You give from what you receive. Freely you have re received, freely you give, right? This is why we have the, the YouTube and the Facebook and all that stuff going on. It's not because I'm so pretty and I need to, my face needs to be all over the world. That was really weird. You all think I mean it. <laughs> Praise God. But it's because we need to get the Gospel out. It's the Great Commission, go into all the world. And if that gets us going, then we, we, we'll use it. We'll use everything we can use to get the gospel out, to tell people. Because the enemy is going around whispering through religion, lying to people. Lying to people, telling them that they've, 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 they've got to repent some more, or do some more, or crawl around on their bellies some more, and, and go and see the dude in the wooden box and ask him to forgive you, or go, go and kneel in front of some feather and kiss the ring on his finger and get some more forgiveness, some more repentance. That's lies, that's just lies. Crawling around on your belly for a while, saying a few more Hail Marys and a few more Our Fathers, and I'm not getting on anyone's area. But I used to do that as a kid, full of condemnation. I had to go and see the dude that, in the box. What's that all about? I follow a man with a box, but I ain't going to go and talk to a man in a box. <laughs> Praise God. You know, pay that extra bit on top of what Jesus has already paid in full. Salvation, paid in full. Redemption, paid in full. Forgiveness, paid in full. Healing, paid in full. You have not got to do anything extra. You haven't got to ask for any more forgiveness. You haven't got to crawl around on your hands and knees anymore. You haven't got to do that stuff. Man, that sucks. That's not love. That's not love either. That's not unconditional love, is it? Man, that, just, that makes me want to turn some tables over. Isn't it though? Anyway. I'm coming into a close, which is quite hilarious because yet again, I'm only halfway through the message. But there's always next week. Amen. Most people are haunted by the memories of their mistakes. They're haunted by their, their pains and their sorrows and it's become a filter or a lens that they view life through. But we've got a saviour. And he's replaced that image with our complete deliverance from those things. And it's the, it's the placement of that replacement 
which is so important for us to live free. We need to put Jesus, that lens, the lens of Jesus, in front of everything that we look at. Everything that we look at. Because it's important for us to be able to live free, putting in front of us, posting the, 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 the guardian of our hearts, the truth, at the, the gateway of our place of refuge and rest. We're the ones who apply the truth. We're the ones who look through the lens of Jesus. And anything contrary to that is down to us. And I really want to encourage us at the start of this year to, to have a different... Put your spiritual glasses on, amen. Look through a different lens. Amen. You know, we must remember to remember what Jesus has done and never forget it because God has provided everything that we will ever need through Jesus. And don't you sit there and think, oh yeah, I know that. Because I just had a real sense, oh, and they've got lunch, you know. Yeah. Hold your horses. Uh, Benga, lock the door. Because <laughs> I, 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 I just got to go with this. Sorry. Are you, can you give me five more minutes? Yes. Praise the Lord. I've got, we, we, God has provided us with everything that we need through Jesus, right? And Jesus said that he's given us something else. There's another benefit that you all need to be reminded of today. He gives us rest. He gives us rest. Matthew 11.28 says, Jesus says, Come to me, all who labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Now everyone likes a rest, right? Everyone thinks they need a bit more rest, right? Like the snooze button. You've just had eight hours sleep, and you think, I want to press a button and have ten more minutes. You know, it's like, we always want that little bit extra, don't we? We need more rest. But I'm not just talking physical here. Because I know so many people who just need to rest from how they think. Rest from how you think. Because they think negatively almost constantly. They hear information and paint a negative picture almost constantly. They think the worst about other people constantly. They think the worst conclusion is all they can ever expect from any situation constantly. And I know a lot of you are thinking of that person in your life that you know who's just like that right now. I've got a couple <laughs> that spring to mind. But I know there's one or two of you in here who think like that as well. Whew. Silence. I'm talking to you. Look to Jesus. Go to him. Read what he says and remember that. Learn Scripture so that you can remind yourself of what you have in Him. Don't rehearse the worst. Remember a verse. Write that one down. I need a t-shirt with that one. Remind yourself of all His benefits and give yourself a rest. Give yourself a rest. Stop all your nonsense. All the nonsense has been dealt with already. Amen? Amen? Let's pray. Father, I believe in your word. Jesus, I believe in your works. And I'm declaring right now that everything you've heard today, and I'm speaking into your hearts right now, that everything that you've heard today is sealed. Sealed in your heart. Don't forget to remember who you are because of what he has done for you it's true it's real allow yourself room in your heads to have big dreams there's a there's a couple of you in here that you you've stopped dreaming you've stopped dreaming it's time to dream again it's time to take the limits off it's time to think big because he's a big big god and he's got plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Well, you've had those dreams kicked out of your life. I'm saying that, 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 that Jesus has put them right back in there. Nothing's changed. The dream is still the dream. Those dreams you had, 
I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. The dream is still alive. It's not dead, still alive. In the name of Jesus, it's still alive. I'm speaking life into your dreams. Life into your dreams, not death. Nothing's dead. He's a God of restoration. And everything that's been stolen from you, your dreams, are restored now in Jesus' name. And, and do you know what? Some of you need to force yourself to put a smile on your face. <laughs> Praise God. Just put, a, look, just put a smile on your face. Like you just heard some really good news because you did. And Jesus, we leave, we leave all things that are not of you with you right now. In your mighty name, our Lord and our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. So let's say goodbye to everyone on the YouTube. Bye, everyone. See you next time. And um, if any of you would like...